Hi, and welcome to this 10-minute talk about calendar aging of commercial lithium-ion batteries. I'm Alana Zoki, and I will share today some of our recent findings on what are the electrochemical paths leading to degradation when batteries are load-free, so at rest conditions. And I hope you find it useful. Batteries will age at different rates according to the materials quality and usage patterns. Charge and discharge rates, as well as temperature, are often explicit parameters in most models used to simulate battery behavior and predict its useful life. Also, degradation is chemistry-specific, meaning that the combination of materials and electrolyte used impact on the overall aging process in a complex way. An important aspect that affects batteries' durability is the presence of an intelligent battery management system, able to monitor and actively control the load at different nodes within the battery pack as the battery ages. However, batteries will inevitably age regardless if in use or not. When devices are off, for instance, when the car is parked, no active control from a BMS takes place. The resulting silent chemical degradation of batteries at rest is what we refer to as the calendar aging and are quite relevant in an electric car especially if we consider that it will likely spend more than 90% of its entire life parked. While additional kinetic and mechanical effects will contribute to the cycling aging, when internal components are constantly exposed to volume variations with intercalation, calendar aging, on the other hand, is dominated by the internal thermodynamics of anode and cathode and the eventual crosstalk between them. The results are highly dependent on the state of charge and temperature that the battery experiences during storage. As an example of such dependence, here I show how the state of health evolves as a function of eight different states of charge and three temperatures. Note that a combination of lower temperatures and SOCs can translate to up to 10% of SOH variation after one year of calendar aging. So to discuss this topic, I'll be showing results gathered in our facilities at Lancaster University from a systematic series of tests conducted using a commercial battery widely employed by the automotive sector, composed of NCA as cathode material and graphite silicon oxide as anode. I'll limit this presentation to the results and analysis recently published by our group, which you can find online as open access publication by following the link given on this slide. To evaluate performance losses from the calendar aging, monthly checkup tests were done. From these regular checkups, we extract all the information necessary to compute differential voltage analysis, relative discharge capacities, internal resistances, and the variation of charge and discharge endpoints. Also, to confirm the role of anode and cathode on the full cell behavior, half cells were assembled as coin cells for electrochemical characterization. Results from capacity fade and the associated apparent activation energies reveal two different degradation regimes. One at low SOCs, where capacity fade and state of charge evolve in a linear fashion. Here, an increase of SOC promotes greater capacity losses and temperature dependence. At high SOCs, in contrast, greater SOC during storage does not necessarily imply worse capacity retention, as highlighted by the spoon-shaped profile obtained and the local minima detected at 80% state of charge, which reveals the worst storage condition for this chemistry. The break of tendency with the increase of SOC is also marked by the steep drop on the activation energy above 60% SOC in the full cell, which confirms the important role of the electrochemical potential of intercalated lithium in the anode half cell, as displayed in detail by our data on the right. Due to an oversized anode and presence of silicon, 50% lithiation of the anode will be reached when the full cell is at 60% SOC. At this very value, the anode overpotential drops rapidly by about 30 mV and remains constant during the stage 1, stage 2 to phase equilibrium. 
In a closer inspection on how the open circuit potentials drift from month to month, we observed significant negative drift for batteries stored at high SOCs, especially in combination with high temperatures. For these cells at the highest storage SOC, the disproportionate OCV drift observed is not followed by capacity loss, indicating reversible self-discharge. This phenomenon is particularly important at pack level once high self-discharge rates promote significant imbalances if no proper active control is present in the battery management system. To better understand the nature of the OCV drifts, we analyzed the charge and discharge endpoints, knowing that cathode and nanode related effects can be probed by this metric. In the high SOC region, charge endpoints increase with SOC, meanwhile discharge endpoints are nearly SOC independent. This indicates that cathode side reactions are accelerated by the increase of SOC. In addition, an abnormal overshoot to positive values in a concerted manner for both anode and cathode endpoints enables us to confirm the appearance of internal short circuits for cells stored at the highest SOC here tested. To investigate the nature of the short circuits, the particular subset of cells stored at 100% state of charge was tested at float mode at three different temperatures. Based on the temperature dependence and the fact that self-discharge currents build up rather slowly, we confirm that they do not involve direct electron transfer, for instance via short-circuiting dendrites, but rather via an electrochemical shuttle mechanism. The inset figure on the right shows the self-discharge process in a simplified equivalent circuit scheme via a resistor RSD parallel to the effective cell capacity. From the magnitude of current, internal self-discharge flows via a micro short of resistance in the order of kilo ohms. At OCV, the effective capacity can be otherwise consumed through parasitic process, here represented by the parallel resistor RSD, which depletes the stored energy of the cell through a self-discharge current causing the terminal voltage to drop. Degradation pathways, such as loss of lithium inventory and loss of electrode storage capabilities, become apparent in differential voltage analysis. By quantification of the evolution of DVA markers, we confirmed that loss of lithium inventory dominates the degradation at low storage SOCs. At high SOCs, loss of lithium inventory is also dominating, although some loss of electrode storage capabilities can also be detected by this approach. As a working hypothesis, CO2 from electrolyte decomposition is a likely candidate to induce shadow-based self-discharge. We illustrate our model by means of a Sunke-style mass flow diagram. The thicknesses of the bars and arrows reflect the relative rates of reactions Shuttle-related currents are matched by lithium-ion currents of equal magnitude, which are required for charge neutrality in the electrolyte and to supply and consume electrons at the anode and cathode, respectively. At the anode, a parallel flow of lithium ions feeds into ongoing ACI formation. The anode potential is the key parameter to determine the rate of irreversible loss of lithium. Comparing 20% state of charge and 80% state of charge, the worst condition here observed, the higher rate of ACI formation corresponds to the lowest anode potential in a working cell. With further SOC increment, the therefore higher cathode potential drives the shuttle mechanism, which ends up diverting lithium ions away from the ACI formation to the cathode, alleviating the capacity fate observed. To conclude, NCI graphite silicon cells show the worst performance in terms of capacity retention for cells stored at 80% state of charge. The additional analysis of endpoint slippages in floating experiments for cells stored at 100% SOC suggest a cathode-driven shadow type of mechanism. And the local maximum of capacity fade at 80% state of charge is down to an interplay between irreversible loss of lithium and reversible self-discharge.
A big thank you to all my fellow colleagues who collaborated in this paper. Please send your questions.